let me tell you a personal story. Last July, my life and work partner, Mohammed and I decided to go on a vacation for the first time in five years of our marriage. Because we are workaholics, we usually only travel for work. Fast forward to JFK Airport. We were waiting for our flight to Frankfurt. There was a white man in his 30s sitting nearby. He did not stop staring at me in a suspicious way that scared me. I received such uncomfortable stares before, but never like this. Mohammed and I boarded the plane and took our seats. Holding hands, we said a short prayer, asking God to make this trip safe, peaceful, and joyful. I kissed him on the cheek and laid my head on his shoulder. 10 minutes more to take off. It seemed like it's going to be the best vacation ever. Until two airport security employees came to my seat and asked me respectfully, please come with us with all your belongings. I was shocked. Like, why me? After they already did the random secondary security screening on me. So at that point, I was really scared. They refused Muhammad's request to join me and they took me out of the plane. Worried, I followed the security officer, and many questions are running through my mind. They took me to a room, they inspected me and asked me questions, and then I was cleared. We returned to the gate, and the same guy who was staring at me stood up, got so angry, and started shouting in front of everyone, there's no way you are going to let her back in. Are you crazy? I told you she's dangerous. I felt so confused, embarrassed, angry. The security officer looked at me and said, you have one minute to catch this flight. So I left without arguing. I remember I was walking with the jet bridge with my head down, feeling so broken, knowing now why I was taken out of the plane. I arrived to the plane walked in the aisles, trying to reach my seat, trying to smile in the faces of all the people who are staring at me, hating me for making their flight late, or suspicious about me, why they took me in the first place. Finally, I reached my seat and sat next to Muhammad. He asked me, what's the problem, dear? I answered simply, this. Wearing hijab is a personal choice I make every single day. But at that moment, I felt very vulnerable and thought maybe I will not make this decision tomorrow. I couldn't sleep during that flight. I kept thinking about that man. Why did he hate me? Maybe he just doesn't know me. What happened to me at the airport was an incident of Islamophobia. Islamophobia is real. It is unfortunately skyrocketing in the United States, and it's dangerous. Some might shout, like that man at the airport did, and some might shoot, and I'm not exaggerating. These are, or were, Dia, Yusur, and Razan. They were all one family. They were all so passionate about volunteering, helping their community, they were all under the age of 24 years old. They were all American citizens. And they were all tragically shot and killed, execution style, in their house by their neighbor. This is the point when Islamophobia becomes not only a phenomena, but an illness. We can boldly blame the media in the United States for feeding the stereotypes and painting all Muslims with a broad brush. But at the same time, we cannot spare barbarian ISIS the blame for feeding the media narrative in the past few years and igniting Islamophobia in the West all over again. 90% of ISIS victims are Muslims. All Muslim leaders around the world are against ISIS. And the latest hit list issued by ISIS had many of the Muslim leaders on it. But these terrorists, are unfortunately succeeding in feeding the hatred between the East and the West, Muslims and people from other religions. They are succeeding in making the gap wider. So because of that, building bridges 
is my ultimate goal. I've started to understand that I have three different factors that help me to achieve this goal. Being a filmmaker, it's both a privilege and a responsibility at the same time. The ability of reaching out to millions of viewers, being a social media influencer, and having hundreds of thousands of followers on my social media platforms, and the ability of reaching out to them as well. And my mutual understanding of both the East and the West. These three factors have helped me to tell different narratives, to break some stereotypes. They help me in building bridge between people and connecting them, especially people from different cultures. The incident that happened to me at the airport inspired me to spread awareness through my work as a filmmaker. Many people have never met a Muslim woman. And even if they did, many have misconceptions about us. And some are even afraid of us. Many people think Muslim women are forced to wear hijab or oppressed. Others think Muslim women are ignorant or less educated, and the list goes on. Personally, I've been asked many questions. Like, are you allowed to travel? Are you allowed to drive a car? Do you wear this in front of your family and husband? Do you sleep with it and shower with it? <laughs> so, as a filmmaker, this was my answer. Let's watch together. just like you, and I don't think a piece of fabric should create a barrier between us. We produced this PSA video with Mudanisa, and in less than two weeks, it reached over three million viewers across social media platforms. Another project that we did for the same purpose, <laughs> just wait for it, <laughs> for the same purpose <laughs> of spreading awareness was Islamophobin. And though Islamophobia is a very serious issue, we decided to tackle it with humor and comedy. Let's watch this together. Do you think your neighbor is a terrorist? Hey, how you doing? Hey! Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Does your fear of Muslims get in the way of living a normal life? Oh, no! He's coming! No! Did you call an Uber? Yeah, we'll take the next one, it's fine. All right. Okay. You saw the app. I didn't know. I didn't know. It said no. I didn't know. Do you judge people by their outer appearance? Introducing Islamophobin. Now in an easy and convenient chewing gum. Starts working within five minutes to relieve bigotry and intolerance. Call your doctor if your Islamophobia worsens or you have hallucinations that discrimination isn't real. Side effects include fondness, brotherhood, acceptance, loss of bigotry, increase in rationality, and possible denouncement of superiority. I didn't realize I had a problem, but admitting is the first step. Islamophobia worked for me. Ask your doctor if it's right for you. That's why we went for comedy, because comedy acts like a wooden sword. It hits the point without harming anyone. So the gum was produced by Care National, 
and we produced the PSA along with Pete's house. And this video got over 10 million views on social media platforms. Many people in the East have never traveled to the West. And many people in the West have never traveled to the East. So probably they never met. Each side have prejudgments about each other and stereotypes about each other. So I'm not only trying to bring more understanding from the East to the West, but also the other way around. Social media is a very powerful tool in connecting people. Through my social media platforms, I shared many stories of amazing people in my life, like that NYPD officer. I remember his kindness very well when we were filming on set, and when he saw me shivering, he invited me to warm up in his police car. And like the story of my amazing friend, Ivan, who called me and suggested we go get some water and snack for the volunteers at Washington Dallas Airport. And then she volunteered as a lawyer. And when I got tired and went home, she stayed there helping people during the night hours. These were only two stories out of many stories I have shared on my Facebook. These two kind people were Americans, and through their kindness, I tried to show the world how great the majority of Americans are, hoping that this would help people to stop generalizing and to stop believing stereotypes, like all Americans are racist, or like all Arabs and Muslims are terrorists. I want to share another personal story that happened to me when I was in Italy. I've always wanted to visit Rome and the Vatican City and learn more about history, culture, and art. After I visited St. Peter Basilica, I was walking with my friend when we passed by two priests sitting nearby. One of them called me and asked me if I were Muslim. I answered him smiling yes, thinking that this question was only an introduction for an interfaith conversation. But that priest looked at me and spit at me in disgust and said, Ich, Muslim. I was shocked. I was expecting him to be more understanding, not only as a human being, but as a legit spiritual leader. I decided to ignore the hate again, and I walked away. But I didn't hate all priests, all Christians, and I still love my Christian friends, and I still love Jesus. And for those who don't know, I can't be Muslim without believing in and loving Jesus. He wasn't a good priest, but obviously, I didn't ask anyone to apologize on his behalf, because I know it's his individual behavior and his own responsibility. You don't have to be an outstanding person to think this way. You just need to be rational and to stop believing a stereotype and to stop generalizing. I have traveled so far to 15 different countries around the world, and I'm so blessed. I have many friends from all over the globe. Every single time I travel to a new country, every single time I meet a new friend, I realize how much more we are similar than we are different. So if you believe in this too, in our similarity as brothers and sisters in humanity, and if you really want to do something, you don't have to be a filmmaker or a social media influencer. You don't have to be an expert at interfaith and cultural conversation. Everyone can do something. A cup of coffee with your neighbor from different background of religion or culture can be the first step in building these bridges. If that man at the airport who reported me and called me dangerous had a conversation with a Muslim woman in his community before, my experience might have been different. But if we work together, building these bridges, it would be a much more beautiful story in the future. So take the first step, take the lead, and remember, building a bridge takes two. Thank you.